little scabs and different things very much on your apples. I'm so glad you asked, because this, I got this revelation last year with insects. I had a ton of farmers come in here after the film came out, and they all came with two same questions. The first thing they said, well, how come you don't have mud? Our farm's all mud. Why have no exposed dirt? Why should I have mud? You go out in nature, there's no mud. No. That only happens to take the cover off. Okay. You want to my kale over here? You see that lost little kale? You see it over here? And they all said this, every one of them. How come your kale doesn't have aphids? Ours has aphids. <laughs> and when I hear something over and over and over, I'm kind of sensing I'm supposed to learn something here. <laughs> so I, I would anticipate when they show up and say, are you guys growing kale? Oh, yeah. Do you have aphids? Yeah. Well, come look at this. So I asked God. I says, God, what's, what's up with this insect issue? Here's what he showed me. It was amazing. He says, everything in nature except the human race is a total connection and harmony for the support and maintenance of the environment. I st sat back and thought, wow. And it's true. Everything in nature is totally balanced. And he gave me an example. He says, when you see predators go hunting for food, meat, they go into flocks and herds and take out the weak, the old, and the crippled. When we go hunting, what do we do? We take out the biggest and best. You see, nature, the, cr the, pr the predators are trying to maintain a healthy flock and herds. So they're taking out the weak ones. So only the healthy ones reproduce healthy offspring. Same with plants. Insects are only taking out diseased, weak, dehydrated, stressed plants. They don't take out healthy ones. And their design and purpose is to maintain healthy plants producing healthy seeds that maintain healthy plants forever. And I was so amazing. Like, wow. And so I, I just love how I get confirmation. This woman comes from um, South Dakota. And I had this kale over there. And it was really big. She says, oh, can I get some of that? Is this from the farms like Boston? So she's, she picked a few. And she's running to her car. She says, where are you going? I'm going to get in the bag, man. This is better than stuff I got at the f farmer's market, you know. So she's picking this kale. And I share with her about the insects. And she got it. She's looking at the bottom. And here on the ground is a slug eating a dead leaf. It's not eating my healthy kale. It's eating the dead leaf. Because you see, it's connected. And I always say, well, you know, insects don't buy, eat my stuff because when they bite into it, they drown. My produce is so full of water that they can't get to the cellulose. When they bite into it, they just pff, infuse with water. So they go after stress dehydrated stuff because that's the way they can get food. And you look at aphids. Aphids will only come on plants that are dehydrated. If your plant's well watered and healthy, you never see aphids. As soon as it gets dry, aphids are there. It's like the plant saying, I'm stressed, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going down, take me out. I stuck these little plants in my wood chips. The next day they're all wilted down because of the, you know, it's hot. The next morning, I had never seen a slug in my wood chips. My celery was covered with slugs. <laughs> and but you know what I did? I said, I want to I want to I want to get this. I want to understand what's happening in nature. God says, just watch. I come back the next day and the slugs are eating the celery down the stumps third day, after they overcame their transplant shock, they're standing upright, the slugs are gone. They weren't there. And he says, they never bothered their celery over here. But as soon as they were stressed, they put out a signal, a message that they got, these slugs got, take me out, I'm dying. It's huge. It's so huge. So all the, see when I first came here, my soil was weak. I'd have, I'd have fungus issues, I'd have all kinds of bugs and stuff. I have none now. You know, I say that, you know, if you're in good health, take care of yourself, you don't get sick. Some of you next to you is coughing and sneezing, it's going to bother you because your immune system is working. Same with them. When they're in good health, vigorous, growing, <clears throat> insects don't bother. They're good. So it's just, again, such a simple answer. And here we're out there killing insects. You know, I think it's so insane about allopathic medicine. If you get a headache, that's like the light going on your dash saying your oil's low. You don't take the the light bulb out, you, right. you put the oil in. And if you take the stress and whatever caused that headache away, the headache goes away. Don't take the headache out. That's the warning light. That's saying you can't live like this. You've got to change how you're living. And it's just so stupid. Same with all diseases that way. You get cancer because you're in acid condition. Cancer cannot live in an in a, in a acid condition. If you alkalize your body, cancer dies. The solution is so simple. Here they're out there radiating people, cutting, cutting them, and, and doing all this insanity poisoning with all this toxic stuff, what well, all they had to do was just adjust how they live, alkalize, drink plenty of water, and you're well. It's just, and, and, and I say, well, what happened to the human race? Where, where do our minds go? We don't even think anymore. And if you think about it, you get the answer. You know how you're taught in school how to learn? You're taught that. You're taught to be a learner, not a thinker. And it's intentional. 
because that way they can control you. You're given all this information, you give it back on tests, and no one ever told you where it came from, why, how it got there, so you just become a parrot. And whatever the, the experts tell you, you believe, right. and you go there, and you become puppets, totally controlled. It's, it's insanity, and it's just like... <laughs> now, birds, I wouldn't lump them in with the same classification as insects, and they really love those new little starts that are coming up. <laughs> yeah, and that's why my cat's handy. Oh, okay. Ender crow. Yeah, crow. And, and you see this crow over here? No. Oh, on that white pole? Oh, dead that crow. is the finest scare crow on the planet. Because oh. crows, are, crows are really intelligent. They're smart birds. And when they see a dead one hanging over my orchard, they know this is not a safe place to be. So mm -hmm. how often do you have to kill one? Every year one I put one up there. Oh. Once a year. And if I don't have it, if I don't <laughs> have it there, crow. see, I, I, the, the, the little, the little um, birds, like the robins and stuff, they'll, they, they don't do a lot of damage. So they'll eat. But those crows, they'll come in and pick a pack here. Go, they destroy yep. your orchard. And, they're and awful. They're terrible. Yep. Yeah. And so, man, I don't tolerate those. There's other birds I can they, I can share. But those crows, I, I have no use for. Them. And one year, boy, I, put, I, I got a raven. It was, it was, out, it was out in my, 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 my uh, pasture out here. I don't know what it was. He was in the ground looking some. So I went to my, my shed and got my 22. And usually when they see you get a gun, they take off. But this guy wasn't paying attention, and I, and I got him. When I hung him up there, I tell you, the crows flew a lot higher the next year before. The, it was amazing how that was like, whoa, don't go near that place. So you could probably put any old thing up there no, and they would not I don't, I, I don't like think a chicken. I, I, or? I don't think a chicken would work. Because oh. who cares about a chicken? But when they see themselves, their own kind, their own kind oh. it's like, this is not safe. Because chickens are a lot easier to kill than <laughs> They're dumb. You know, crows are smart. They're really in. You ever notice them? When they yes, come in, they, they got are. one guy over standing guard. Yeah. As soon as you walk up with your whatever, they tell them and they'll leave. Yeah. I mean, they're really yeah. intelligent. They're totally tracking. Yeah, we just have herds of them or flocks oh, of oh, them, I did, not it, herds. Oh, <laughs> one year, man, every 5 o'clock in the morning, they come in here like just flocks come and start wiping out my stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And I ask guys, how do I stop this? Is a kill one hanging up there, you know. And um, okay. it worked. And it's Good. totally effective. And it's, you know, um, not expensive. They're, they're free. No. <laughs> but that's, I tell you, no, it's a challenge. A good shot. You, you, what, what I, what I, only way I get them now, what I do, I'll take some garbage from the house, you know, I mean, something that's, you know, not, I'll throw it to my chickens, and I'll, and I'll walk in behind my woods, and the crows will see it, and they'll come down to get it, and I'll be hanging out my woods, and I'll nail them, because uh -huh. they can't see me. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, that's the only way I can, because I have to really sneak that's up on them, because, thought, because yeah. they're not, they're not, they're not, you know, standing around, what, come shoot, shoot come shoot me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah.